Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don. Don, what's that? Well, Jack, we have to have a theme song for Grape Nuts Flakes, and I thought that'd be a good idea. Well, that's awful. You better get another one next week. Okay. The Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> the man of the house sounds before he has breakfast. He opens one eye and groans, oh, what a day, what a day. But wait, give the man of the house a big tempting bowl full of delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes, and then you hear something like this, oh boy, what a day, what a day. <laughs> same word, same man, but notice the difference. The difference that goes with a swell tasting breakfast. And it's the makings of a swell tasting breakfast you get in each big 12 ounce package of grape nuts flakes. Your favorite malty rich grape nuts flavor in toasty brown tempting flake form. So keep smiling, friends, on the home front with plenty of delicious sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes. the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, California, we bring you that sun-tanned adenoids. Adenoids? That's Adonis. Read it right. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> adenoids. That sun-tanned Adonis, Jack Benny. Well, thank you, thank you. All right, for a penny. <laughs> thank you, sir. Who is that guy? Uh, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, it sure is a thrill broadcasting for this all-Army audience. Yes, it is, Jack. Just think, we have Army nurses and patients here from Turney Hospital, soldiers from the Tank Corps at Camp Young, Army Air Force pilots from Camp Hemet, and pilots and ground crews from the Ferry Command. And don't forget the boys from the Glider School at 29 Palms. They're here, too. Oh, yes, yes, and that reminds me. Will you fellas up there in the gliders quit looping around the chandelier? <laughs> We're broadcasting. I don't see why they can't leave their gliders outside. But you know, Don, with all these soldiers in this area, Palm Springs has really changed. Well, what do you mean, Jack? Well, uh, I know a cute girl that works in the drugstore up the street here, so last night I dropped in as usual to ask her for a date. And what happened? She's booked solid till 1987. <laughs> I'll be down to get her in a wheelchair, honey. <laughs> by the way, uh, by the way, Don, uh, where are you stopping here in town? Oh, I'm at the Deep Well Guest Ranch. Oh, at the Deep Well, eh? Uh, yes. Where are you staying, Jack? Me? Oh, I'm at the Shallow Bucket Motel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh... It's right in it's right in back of the deep well. You can't miss it. It's a nice white building with a corral around it. Corral around it? Why, that's our stable. I know. When I say I'm going to hit the hay at night, I really mean it. <laughs> but the hotels are crowded. I don't mind roughing it here in the desert. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. <coughs> mm. Here we are in Old Palm Springs with its sunshine oh so bright. Okay. Here it's calm and here it's peaceful. But hold your hats on Saturday night. <laughs> well, naturally, Mary, all the soldiers come to town on Saturday night and they have a right to celebrate. I hear some of these boys haven't been off the desert in 12 weeks. You're telling me. <laughs> well, we didn't expect a laugh on that one, did we? I dropped my handkerchief on the main street yesterday and, oh, brother, what a riot. 
You mean they moved in on you, eh? Yeah, now I know what they mean by a military objective. <laughs> well, after all, Mary, there aren't many girls around here. Is you said it. You should have been at the USO dance last night. What happened? I barely got started dancing when a corporal came up and said, Pardon me, miss, may my squad cut in? <laughs> Squad? You mean to say you were out on the floor with eight fellas at once? Yeah. That's the first time I ever danced cheek to cheek to cheek to cheek to cheek to cheek to cheek. <laughs> all right, all I know what you mean, but you'd think that, well, look who's here, Dennis Day. Where? You. <laughs> You're Dennis Day. Hello. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hmm. What are you staring at, kid? Gee whiz, look at all those big moths flying around. Moths? Well, I'll... now for the last time, will you fellas in the gliders please come down? <laughs> Relax, it's your day off. Well, Dennis, Dennis, what's on your mind? Mind? That's a hot one. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, how do you like it here? Have you been having fun? Yeah, but this town sure has changed. Remember when we were here a year ago and we used to step out with all those pretty girls? Yes, sir. You and I sure played gin rummy last night, didn't we? <laughs> that, uh, that we did. How much did I win from you, kid? $300. Oh, yes. I can't understand it. We were only playing for matches. <laughs> well, you see, Dennis, those matches represented $10 apiece. And I had them all. When I had them all, a match was a match. <laughs> Never mind, you had fun, so forget it. Say, Dennis, uh, Dennis, did you go around visiting the different camps and sing for the boys like I told you to? Yeah, and you know, Mr. Benny, I saw a lot of tanks at Camp Young and they're painted all different colors. Well, sure, sure, Dennis, they camouflage them. Camouflage? What's that? That's the stuff they put on Jack's face when he makes a picture. <laughs> That's makeup. Everybody uses it. In layers? Never mind. <laughs> Anyway, it's about, it's about time for a band number. Say, Phil, Phil, have you got a good hot tune for us? If you're referring to a musical selection, I have one prepared that should be rather euphonious. Uh, euphonious? That means it'll sound good. I know. You know now. I knew before. <laughs> Well, what I want to know is, where did you get that highbrow language? Well, I've been studying English in night school, old boy. <laughs> Phil, what's a married man with a baby going to night school for? That's the only way I can get out of the house. <laughs> well, you ought to stay home. You studied French all last year, and you don't remember a thing. I do, too. Get this. Jer, Pergere, Don, Les Palm, Derter. What does that mean? I went fishing in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> well, that's the silliest hobby I ever heard of. <laughs> Phil, getting back to your euphonious musical selection, how about it? Wee oui, wee, oui, mademoiselle. Hmm, go ahead and play. I went fishing in the mashed potatoes.
was, uh, that was Trains in the Night, played by Phil Harris and his riveters of music. <laughs> they, they really hammer it out. So they were... <laughs> Say, Phil. <laughs> Say, Phil. Yes, Jackson. Uh, Phil, you and the boys are going back to Los Angeles Tuesday, aren't you? Yeah. Well, that's the day gas rationing starts. Uh, how are you going to get back? Well, you know that big bus we always ride in? Yes. Well, we're going back. I'm going to put my brass section behind it and let them blow. <laughs> that's the best substitute for gas I've heard of. No kidding, huh? Well, Jack, uh, gas isn't the only thing that's being rationed nowadays. No, there are a lot of things, Don. There's a half a pound of sugar a week, no whipped cream, one cup of coffee a day, and meatless Tuesday. But... We'll just have to get used to it. Used to it? You've been rehearsing for this all your life. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've always served a lot of food in my house. Go on, you wouldn't even put a piece of cheese in a mouse trap. I wouldn't, eh? Then how is it I catch four or five mice a week? Huh? You charm them with a flute. <laughs> Listen, Mary, if you think I'm bad, you should have been at Eddie Cantor's house with me for Thanksgiving dinner. You had dinner at Cantor's house? Yes. I was on his program Wednesday night, and he didn't give me many jokes, so he invited me to dinner. I guess he didn't want to be a complete louse. <laughs> anyway, Eddie, Ida, the five daughters, and myself sat down to eat. Did you have turkey, Jackson? Yes, that's the only bird I ever saw that was beaten to death. <laughs> You should have seen, Don, you should have seen how fast Ida and those five daughters went after the turkey. Henry Kaiser must have taught them how to eat. <laughs> that food really disappeared. Well, Jack, uh, what part of the turkey did you get? The rudder. <laughs> that, that candor is really a guy. You know? Well, uh, talking about Thanksgiving dinner, Jack... You should have been over to my house. Mmm, yum, yum. Hmm. Uh, what, uh, what did you have, Don? Well, uh, for breakfast, I had a bowl of toasty brown sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes right out of that 12-ounce economy size package. Uh, good, but, uh, what did you have for dinner? Then around lunch, I felt hungry again, so I had another dish of grape nuts flakes. <laughs> but what did you have for dinner? Well, for dinner, I had a great big turkey. Good. And Jack... Do you know what my turkey was stuffed with? Yes, and I wish this was the $64 question. <laughs> Do I know? Huh? Hey, Phil, uh, Phil, did you have a nice Thanksgiving dinner? Oh, it was lovely. We started out with Vichy Soie à la Crillon. Yes. Then we had some palm de terre à la Met. Uh-huh. And then for our main dish, we had Faison rotisserie. Faison? You know, roast peasant. That's pheasant. <laughs> roast peasant. For good... Phil, I give you my word of honor, you're stupid. <laughs> you can believe me. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Can you imagine wading through all that French and then stumbling on a peasant? That's life, Phil. That's life. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, the Benny Livestock Company... I mean, the Benny Live Sock Company. Uh, will present an unusual novel. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Unusual and novelty mean the same thing. Phil, if you don't shut up, I'll take that yo-yo off your baton. <laughs> now, it so happens that, um... It so happens that many of the tank troops who are engaged in the North African campaign learned the principles of desert warfare right down here at Camp Young. So for our play this evening, we're going to take you to North Africa and show you the amazing adventures of three boys who trained at Camp Young and who are now on the Sahara Desert. Am I going to be in this? No, Mary, this is about soldiers. There's no part for a girl. You let me be in your play or I'll tell all these fellows you live in a stable. They, they know that already. Do they know you're in there pitching for your room rent? <laughs> All right, you can be in the play. Now, the, um, the three soldiers I spoke of will be uh, Private Phil Harris, Private Don Wilson, and Corporal, I mean General, Jack Benny. <laughs> 
That's the fastest promotion I ever heard of. What? From a pitchfork to a sword in two lines. <laughs> All right, I'll be a corporal. Now, Dennis. Yes, please? Uh, Dennis, you're going to be a general in our play tonight. General Rommel. General Rommel? Whose side is he on? <laughs> Nobody knows. They can't find him. <laughs> they will. Don't worry. Now, Dennis, uh, General Rommel is the head of what's left of the German army in Africa. And you're going to be him. I don't want to be General Rommel. You'll be General Rommel. And now, folks... Well, I won't step on a goose. That's goose step. <laughs> won't step on a goose. Anyway, you're going to be that German general. It's only a play. And now, folks, this drama will go on immediately after a song by our temperamental tenor, Sing Kid. You were so good to me I really thought I had a place in your heart But now I see it never was me It was someone else right from the start My dream can never come true You love him He loves you I love you too A three dreams are one too many So my dream can never come true My hoping that you would love me Was only a man I know I'm through Three dreams are one too many So I'll give my dream to you Three dreams are one too many Three dreams from the forthcoming picture, Powers Girl, sung for the first time on the air by Dennis Day. And incidentally, folks, Dennis sings that song in the, in the picture. Yes, sir. Powers Girls. What part did you play it in, Dennis? I was Tilly, the third girl from the left. <laughs> you were not. Stop showing off. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our drama of army life entitled Three Men in a Tank. So let us journey to North Africa, to the Allied base. In the little town of <laughs> military secret, Morocco. <laughs> Curtain music. <laughs> Boy, it's hot here in Morocco. Detachment, halt! Detachment, halt! <laughs> Gee. 
Detachment! Halt! <laughs> now, fellas, cut that out! Corporal, Corporal Benny and crew reporting for duty, General. What are the orders? Now, listen, Benny, I have a special assignment for you and your tank crew. We've received information that General Rommel is hiding in the little town of... Now, your orders are to proceed to that town and capture Rommel. Yes, sir. Write that down, Private Wilson. I haven't got a pencil. Write that down, Private Harris. I can't write. Okay, I'll memorize it. Now, uh, General Rommel. I mean, now, General. Rommel is pretty tricky. <laughs> But I'll go on this mission, and I'll capture Rommel, or my name is... Quiet, Ham. Get moving. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go, fellas. Detachment. Forward. March. <laughs> Wait till I open the door. <laughs> okay. Let's go, fellas. Here's our tank. We're off for the Libyan Desert. Say, this tank rides pretty good. <laughs> Darn those camels, why don't they stay on their side of the road? Hey, are them things camels? I thought they were horses that had a bad night. <laughs> well, they're camels. And incidentally, Harris, you're the gunner. And everybody clean up around here or we'll never get that gold star for tidiest <laughs> tank in the outfit. <laughs> How are you coming along, Wilson? Fine, sir. I'm all through dusting. All through dusting? Look at those cretonne curtains. I can hardly see the rosebuds on them. <laughs> Take them out. Hey, Corporal, can I have a bottle of beer? It's right in the icebox. Help yourself. The icebox is empty. What? A fine tank with no beer. Oh, hostess. Hostess. Yes, Corporal. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. What are we having for dinner? Great nut flakes. Oh, boy, it says here. <laughs> What? What else are we having? Broiled camel chops with two humps of potatoes. Goody. I think we're running low on gas, Corporal. Hmm, low on gas right in the middle of the desert. Well, I'll be darned. There's a gas station right up ahead. I'll drive in. Here comes the attendant. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? We'd like some gasoline, please. Okay. Where's your A book? <laughs> That's now till December 1st. Now fill up my tank's tank. Five gallons, please. Yes, sir. There you are. Good. How much is that? Nothing. This is a mirage. <laughs> well, I hope I find a mirage after next Tuesday. Well, let's go, men. And I'm going to find Rommel on this desert, or my name ain't... Hmm. Two days on this desert, no trace of Rommel. I wonder where we are. Here comes someone on a camel. He's dressed like an Arab. Oh, yes. I'll see if I can make him understand me. Hello there. Me, American soldier. You tell them where can find Tripoli. I don't know. I'm a stranger around here. <laughs> hmm. Well, aren't you an Arab? No, sir. I want these bloomers shooting crap. <laughs> oh, do they, uh, do they shoot craps around here? In Ethiopia, it's the survival of the fittest. 
Well, uh, where did you get the camel? He knelt down and I faded him. <laughs> well, now, listen, stranger. We're looking for Ramo. Have you seen any Nazis around here? I've worn out four razors, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Good, then he must be around here somewhere. Well, thanks for the information, mister. So long. So long. I'm a sheik of Arabies. Down south in Africa. <laughs> I don't know how long we've been on this desert. What do we got for dinner, hostess? Roast turkey. Roast turkey, roast turkey, meat, meat. Why don't we have sardines once in a while? <laughs> Are you kidding? I wonder where we are. Stop the tank, Corporal. There's a signpost up ahead. Oh, yes. Let's see what it says on that signpost. It says Benghazi, 23 miles. El Agalia, 16 miles. Palm Springs Racquet Club, 8,000 miles. <laughs> and I want to get some tennis in before dinner. Oh, well. Hey, Corporal, look at that guy running across the desert. A fellow in a tracksuit, and he's coming toward us. Hello there. Say, mister, we're American soldiers. Maybe you can help us out. Und die versteinste Gleichung für Technik. Eine Luten für Stuten, Luten, 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 Luten. Which way is Tripoli? What? I beg your pardon? Zum Kaff und die versteinste Gleichung für Technik. Eine Luten, Luten, Stuten, Luten, Luten, Luten. Which way is Tripoli? Wait a minute. I know that face. You're General Rommel, and you're under arrest. Arrest? Come on with us. We're American soldiers. Oh, boy, wait till Hitler hears about this. Amerikanische Soldaten, was gebluten, geheimes gelüten, und die geheime Staatspolizei right in the Führer's face. <laughs> you got something there. Come on, men. We'll get medals for this. Step up to a grocer and ask for a big 12 ounce package of delicious, malty rich grape nut flakes. I know just about what she's thinking. She's thinking of thrifty and nourishing breakfasts. She's thinking of her family's welfare. And now that we're being asked to restrict over meat consumption, we must all find new ways to balance our meals with foods that are plentiful and thrifty, such as milk and whole grain cereals. Breakfasts of grape nuts flakes help to do just this because grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal. So they bring you important whole grain food levels, including iron, niacin, and a generous amount of the essential nerve and energy vitamin B1. So remember, ladies, when you think of nourishment, flavor, and thrift, be sure you think of Grape Nuts Flakes. We're very late, so good night, folks, and thanks, everybody.